Hi, this is Eric from Axis. Today we're going to talk about simple axis substitution utilizing a 2D wireframe cutter path. In this case, it'll be the 2D dynamic. On your screen is the part we're planning on cutting. Getting started, I like to start in my levels tab. I like to see what kind of levels come with parts that I load. In this case, I have one that says part, stock, edge curve, unrolled, and swarf floor. The unrolled level consists of wireframe that's been flattened utilizing the transform function roll and unroll inside a master cam. To make this part we're going to stick primarily with the stock level, the unrolled level, and the part level. Let's get started. From your properties I like to go into the files tab, change my group name to set up one. Moving on we're going to go to tool settings. I'm going to give it a program number assign tool numbers sequentially and warn a duplicate tool numbers because I'm going to be using the mill inch tool library. The stock plane I'm using is top. I'll select solid mesh, select the arrow, select the piece of geometry on my screen. My stock setup is handled. Now I'm going back to my levels tab. I'm going to change from stock to the unrolled geometry. Like I said, this is a piece of flat wire frame taken from the part rolled flat to a plane. Our machining region we're going to select as a chain. Say OK. We're going to come from the outside. We're going to choose an air region so we can start in air because we're cutting the back side of this part. I always preview my chains. The blue is where the cutter is coming from. The red is what it's cutting. Now inside the cutter path, I'm going to select my tool. Like I said, I'm using the mill inch, so I'm going in to select the library tool. I'll select a quarter inch flat. I'm going to set my tool numbers. Notice we started with a one, but I still had to set my length offsets because it's the mill inch library. I'll set my surface feet and my feed per tooth and radial chip thinning. Notice the jump in the feed rate. We'll come back to that. I'm going to select a holder and I'm going to set my overhang length or my tool projection as Master Cam likes to say. We're going to move to on to our cut parameters. I'm going to set my stock to leave on floors to zero because I'm cutting through a cylinder. I'm going to change my approach distance to one inch. I'm going to change my step over from 40% to 20%. But let's go back and take a look at our tool settings now specifically our feed rate. It's jumped because of the radial chip thinning feature being turned on. Back and I'm going to increase my back feed rate so that it's going faster than my cut rate. I'll turn on depth cuts and I'm going to make a rough step of 150 thousandths. On to my linking parameters. I'm going to set a depth of minus 100 thousandths incremental from the wireframe on my screen. I'm also going to set my top of stock to a positive 275 thousandths incremental from the wireframe on my screen. Check my planes, make sure everything's set up the way they should be. Down to my rotary axis control, I'm going to select axis substitution, I'm going to substitute the y-axis counterclockwise, and I'm going to enter a rotary diameter of two inches, which happens to be the diameter of the part. Hit the green check, calculate my flat 2D wireframe cutter path is now anything but flat. Let's go on to verify and let's see exactly what it is we've done. By selecting verify, utilizing the solid from the stock setup, we're ready to go. We'll hit play. And again, remember, gentlemen, this is a 2D wireframe cutter path. Yes, you're going to have to have a fourth axis capability on your machine, fourth axis capability on your post, but this is a wireframe cutter path. Nice thing about the fourth axis on your post is most of those are your standard posts from all your major manufacturers. That's all there is to it, fourth axis manufacturing with a 2D wireframe cutter path. Thanks, and I hope 
you got something from this video. Bye. Thank you.